Hi everyone and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to create a realistic iPad mock-up from the ground up using Canva. iPad flat lays are great for Etsy listings, sharing time lapses over your illustrations on social media, making cover photos for classes and tutorials, Pinterest posts, and lots more. Now I do want to note, I'm going to be using a Canva Pro account and some elements I'll be using are Pro elements and features. However, many alternatives can be accessed on a free account. Canva also provides a 30 day free trial for their pro account and I'll link to that below. And as a thank you for watching, I'll be providing an iPad and Apple Pencil template that I created, which can be used in both the free and pro accounts. More on that in a minute, but for now, let's dive into Canva. Before we begin, I'm going to make use of Canva's frames, which allow you to pop photos and videos into them as often as you'd like, and they're automatically resized to fit the frame. Now Canva does have two built-in iPad frames, one portrait and one landscape. The issue I have with the built-in frames is they're not quite the right aspect ratio for an iPad Pro screenshot. They're actually a bit too short. So if I pull this one in and go back to my screen grab here, if I pop it in, you can see that the top is cut off. Now I can double click and move it down, but then the bottom is cut off. Now, unfortunately, you can't change the aspect ratio of a regular frame, so something is always going to cut, up, cut off and you're sort of stuck. The other issue is that these frames don't match very many of the iPad graphics that you'll find in the element section. So if I pull this one in and I send it to the back and I drag this over the top, you're gonna see that if I drag out, I'd have to drag past the edge of the iPad to get it to fit, otherwise I have this gap there. Now there are grid frames built into Canva that do allow you to shift their aspect ratio, but they don't have the rounded corners that you see on an iPad screen grab. For the purposes of this tutorial, I've created two free custom iPad frames, one portrait and one landscape, as well as an iPad and Apple Pencil graphic, and I've linked them below. They're created using the exact dimensions of a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and we'll work on all other iPad mockups with the exception of the iPad mini, which is a different aspect ratio. Now, since I created the graphics, that means that you can use them whether you have a pro or free account. And if you do decide to use them, just click the link below to access the Canva template. Now, should you decide to use the built-in frame for this tutorial, you can certainly do that. Just remember that the iPad graphic you choose will need to have the same aspect ratio, otherwise you're going to have gaps. So let's start creating our mock-up. I want to build my mock-up on a wood desktop. Now I could upload my own here in uploads or I can go to elements and just type in wood. I'm going to click on photos here and I want something that doesn't have a lot of distracting elements like this one because I want the iPad to stand out and be the focus. Everything else I add around it should be supportive and not compete. So I'm going to drag this one in until it pops in place as my background. I'll pull in the iPad graphic first and then add all of my other elements to fill in around it. So in the template that I provided, if you're using that, I provided the landscape version and the portrait version. So just use whichever one works best for you. I'm going to create a landscape version. So I will either right click and copy this or I can do command or control C. When I head back to my background, I can just paste it in place. Now, if you're going to use the built-in graphics and frames provided in Canva, just go to elements, type in iPad, and you can search for both the frame as well as the graphic you want to use behind it. Now, I didn't add any drop shadows to this graphic so that you have full control over adding it yourself. The first thing I'm going to do is ungroup this and I want to move the frame off to the side for now. Sometimes when you have a graphic linked to something else and try to add a drop shadow to it, it does funny things. So I recommend moving the frame off temporarily and then placing it back on when you're done. So with the iPad selected, I'm going to go to edit image, shadows, and I'll click drop shadow. Now I can open up a menu here that's going to allow me to adjust this. Now, when you create shadows in a realistic mock-up, it's important to first decide where you want your light source to come from, and then have all of your shadows follow the same direction. Light and shadow is one of those things that can give away a mock-up as being mocked up. If something's even slightly off, the viewer may not know exactly what it is, but they're going to know something's not right. I have this going to the bottom right, and I already know that I want my light source to be coming from the top left, so this is all set. 
Our iPad is in place, but we could use some other elements to make this feel more like a scene. So let's head back to the template, find the Apple Pencil, select it and copy it. And then I'll just paste it into my design. I'm going to size this down. Yeah, I want it to sit at the side of the iPad. Now size is another important consideration when you're creating a mock-up like this. When you're creating something like this, keep the relative size of your objects in mind because just like light and shadow, it's a tell that it's fake if your ratios are off. This Apple Pencil is far too big compared to the iPad. In reality, an Apple Pencil is a couple inches shorter than the shortest size of an iPad Pro. So I'm going to size that down to approximate that. And I think that looks about right. Maybe it could be a little bit bigger. I'm going to rotate it to the left here. Now, just like the iPad, I didn't add any drop shadows to this. So I want to go to edit image, shadows and click drop shadow. Now, since I rotated it, Canva's automatically putting the shadow up here. So I'm going to click this menu here and I'm going to change it to bottom left. So this is a great start, but let's add a bit more to the top to warm up the scene and make it more homey. I'm going to go to my elements and search for a coffee cup. Now, this is one of those parts where I'm going to rely on some pro elements. So if you're on a free account, you could replace what I'm adding with something that works just as well. I want something that's a top-down view that adds a nice warm and cozy vibe to a scene. I also want it to have a transparent background. So I'm going to go up to this menu here and click cutouts only and it's going to give me all of the elements that have transparency. Now I like this one here, so I'm going to click it to bring it in. I'll size it down and I want this to be at the top left. Now, once again, I want my highlights and shadows to follow and you can see that in this image, there are already some on the coffee cup. So I have some highlights here, which means the light would be coming from the top left. So I'm just going to rotate this and size it down a little bit more Maybe I'll rotate it the other direction. There we go. And move it up here. So setting a cohesive vibe with your mock-up is another way to add realism. In this scene, I wanted to feel like somebody sitting down to create a pattern with their warm coffee and iPad. We're going to be adding some other elements to follow suit. Now, a couple of things with this coffee cup though. The first is that it needs more of a shadow because it looks a little too flat against the background. So even though it already has a touch of drop shadow, I'm going to go up to edit image, choose shadows, and I want to change the offset a little bit. I also want to bring it to the bottom left. Again, I want, because I rotated it, I need to move the shadow. I'm going to blur it out more so it gives the appearance of a higher cup. And I'm just gonna change the transparency. I'll click apply. And then one last thing I want to do with this coffee cup, it's looking a little dull compared to the rest of the scene. So I'll click it and I'm going to go to edit image. I want to choose adjust and I'm just going to bring the contrast up. I'll bring the brightness up as well. This is another consideration when creating a realistic mock-up is making sure that all of the elements are at the same level of contrast and brightness as if they're all under the same amount of light. Now that I have my coffee cup in place, I want to balance it on the other side by adding a plant. Now I've already chosen a photo that I want to use so I can show you another feature that can be helpful when creating these flat lays. This image does have a background, but because it's a rather clean one and there's a really good contrast between the plant and the background things to depth of field, I can use Canvas Background Remover to get rid of it. Now this is a pro feature, so if you're on a free account, you're going to need to choose another element but there are tons of great top-down plants out there in elements without a background, even for a free account. So for this one, I'm going to head up to edit image, choose background remover. It's going to do a little thinking and temporarily disappear. And then my background is gone. I'm just gonna drag this side in a little bit because I don't really need it. And I want this plant to be up here in the corner. Now, one thing I want to consider when I do that is that, again, I need to consider my light and shadow. So on this image, let me move the iPad out of the way for a second and the Apple Pencil. I'm just gonna drag this back in and make me size it down. On this image, you can see that the light is hitting the right side here. And if my light is coming from the left, I need to rotate this. So I'm going to do that so that the 
light is on the left side, and that includes on the basket, and the shadows are falling to the right. Now I need to add a drop shadow to this. So if I go back to edit image, shadows and drop shadow, you can see that it's adding it to the top here. And that's because Canva doesn't recognize when you rotate something just like we did with the Apple Pencil. So what I need to do is go into this menu here and I'm going to think choose bottom left. Let's see. I'm just gonna click until I find it. I'm gonna choose left and I'm going to bring the offset out a little bit. I want this to have depth. I'm gonna blur it out more and I'm gonna bring the transparency up and now I'm all set. So I'll just drag this off here. And I think I'll just bring the blur out just a little bit more. All right, so I have my plant in place. It's in the right direction considering the light. Let's move the iPad back into the scene where I want it. And I'm just going to add one final thing to this. I want to put a little sketchbook over here. So I will go to my elements and type in sketchbook. Go to photos. And I'm going to use this guy. I'll drag him over here and size him down and I'm going to rotate him so part of it is off the scene. That's another great way of making something look more realistic because in reality, if you're capturing an image of your iPad, you're not necessarily worrying about all aspects being in the shot. So it kind of lends to the realism here when you tip it off the screen a little bit. I want to add a drop shadow to this. And again, I'm going to bring it out just a bit. So I'll blur it more and bring the transparency up. And then one final thing that I want to do is add a pen. And I'll size this down. Now this already has a really good drop shadow on it, so I'm not going to add anything to it, but I'll size it again appropriately for the scene compared to the other objects. All of my elements are in place. One final thing I'm going to do is pull my screen grab into my shot and I want to add a little bit of a boost to this because it's kind of flat and I want it to look like a real iPad. So I'm going to go to edit image and just like with the coffee cup, I'm just going to bring the contrast up so that it looks like it's a lit up screen and not an image of one. I'll do a final double check of all of my shadows. I have room up here at the top that I can add the title for my class and I'm good to go. Now, one of the benefits of using the Pro Canva account is that you have the ability to take the mock-up, copy and resize it, and use it for a totally different purpose without having to start from scratch. So let's say that I want to take this cover photo and create an Instagram post from it. I can go up to resize, and again, you can see it's a Pro feature because it has the little crown. I can choose Instagram post and copy and resize. That keeps the original, and allows me to have this square version. And I can just adjust the size and placement of my object. So I'll just make this a little bit bigger, move it up here. I'm going to drag the sketchbook down here. I think I'll keep it the same size though. I'm going to move the iPad into the middle for this. And now I need to make the Apple Pencil a touch bigger just because I sized the Apple Pencil up. And now I have room for some text here and here, and this makes for a really fun post. Now I want to save both of these to a project in their initial state so that I always have a clean copy. I want to make sure that the name is changed up here. So I'm going to change this to Flatlay iPad Square 1080, just to let me know what that is. Because remember, when you use frames like this one, you can swap things out over and over again. So I could just drag in another screen grab. I could drag in a video of a time lapse of an illustration I created. I can take this iPad out and I could put the portrait version in and create something completely different. But by saving this, I always have it on hand to pull it in. So to do that, you'll go to File, Save to a Folder, you can create a new folder and then save, and that's whether you're on a pro or free version of the app. So that's it. You can use this same process to create tons of different flat lay mockups for sharing your work or creating templates to share and sell with others. Now, if you do that, be sure to use either free elements from Canva or graphics that you've created 
so that anyone, whether they have a free or pro account, can use your templates. So let me know in the comments below, how would you use a mock-up like this one? If you have any questions about this tutorial, please let me know below. Now I have lots more Canva tutorials coming as well as tutorials in the Affinity and Adobe Suites as well as Procreate. So hit subscribe so you always know when a new one is posted. And in the meantime, if you'd like to learn how to create your own custom frame like this one in Affinity Designer, check out this video.